Before you can create a healthy relationship with others, you first have to create a healthy relationship with yourself. Welcome to Let's Talk About It with your host, Dr. Janie Lacey. Janie is a nationally respected psychotherapist, and on this show, she and her featured guests will help you discover and break patterns in your life that can contribute to self-sabotage and unhealthy relationships. Now, here is Dr. Janie Lacey. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It with Janie Lacey. I realized I had to stop pushing away what was happening around me in order to get ahead and get through. I had to get comfortable having a lack of control to change what I couldn't change and do my best to transfer the good inside me to others in whatever way I could. As you begin your humble alpha journey, I realized that as much as we say you control your situation, and you do, there may be circumstances outside of your control that you cannot change. Remember, leaders rise in impossible situations. They change what's in front of them through moment by moment transfers to others of what they carry inside. They end up changing the world by first changing their worlds. These are the words of our esteemed guest, Stephen Kuhn, who is a decorated United States Army combat veteran. He's a speaker, an author, and a consultant who helps individuals dramatically improve their quality of life through the consistent, conscious application of honesty, integrity, and transparency. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you so much. Uh, what, a, what a great introduction. I love the reading from the book. That's amazing. Thank Absolutely. You. Your words um, were transformative, and I hope many other people continue to purchase your book. You know, we've purchased quite a few for a, gr a woman's group that I'm actually um, running right now. So we're looking yeah. forward to getting their feedback. But, you know, for a lot of people, you know, you are new to my uh, audience. So I was want to start with, you know, how would you answer as I was reading your book? And this is one of the important questions that you say that we all need to answer. So how would you answer? Who is Stephen Kuhn? Stephen Kuhn is a powerful connector. So that's my two word moniker, which we talk about in the book. And the reason you, you search for and find and uncover your two word moniker is because then you can apply that to every situation in life, allowing you to integrate your true power or your true identity into each area of life instead of leaning on a title or a position. And this allows you to be immer you know, present constantly in every aspect of life and, of course, enjoy uh, the highest quality of life is what we talk about. So if you want the, uh, the version of podcast version of who I am, <laughs> I'm an American uh, combat veteran, as you said, living in Europe. I'm in Hungary currently. This is my ninth country. Um, I've been here for almost 30 years, married uh, with a Hungarian woman and two children of six and seven years old. I just turned 54 uh, two, two, day, two days ago. And I do consulting, advising, M&A, investment fund, and uh, I work with veterans. We have a group of veterans on Facebook, 15,000, and we have a paid group called the Warrior Council. And that's a group of um, about 100 uh, veteran entrepreneurs who seek sort of to go that next level. Well, you certainly have done your uh, travels because as we were talking about before we uh, started our uh, show, you know, I thought you were still in Peru and you're like, no, I'm in Hungary. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we do an annual retreat to Peru with my co-author, Lane Ballone, and where we work with plant medicine. So we work with uh, the sacred plant medicine, ayahuasca and San Pedro. And we also work with com combo, uh, which is an extract from an Amazonian frog. It's all about cleansing, clarity, certainty. I've heard you speak about that quite a few times. So share with us a lot of us um, that were now introduced to this type of uh, medicine. Share a little bit about what your experience was about that cleansing process. Sure. So, you know, first uh, there's the ayahuasca is a, is a divine feminine plant medicine. And then you have San Pedro, which is a cactus. That's the uh, divine masculine um, energy plant. So ayahuasca is sort of the ether, the visions the dreams, that's, that's, that's what you, you crystallize it in that. Then on the next day, typically, if you want full integration, you work with San Pedro. And San Pedro 
brings you down to the ground and grounds you and gives you the feet to actually implement what it is that you saw. Now, a lot of people use just ayahuasca and they're very in the dreamy world and they never actually implement. And so that's why we use San Pedro. Now, combo is a physical cleanse. Combo, um, just to make it quick, they burn holes in your skin wherever you do it. They had, I had like five on my shoulder, two on my back, and one on my forearm, depending on where your issues are. And um, they, uh, they put the poison of the frog, which is an extract without killing the frog, into each of the burn marks. And that sets you into a powerful, powerful cleanse um, through your body within minutes. And within about 20 minutes, it's over. And you cleanse by purging. So you purge everything out. It pushes everything into your stomach and it, you purge it out. And uh, if you wanna get into it, you can tell by the color of the purge what you are purging. So it's, it's quite powerful. Um, and and we, we work with that spiritual cleansing, mind cleansing, you know, and, and just create that clarity, not only in, in spirit, but in mind and body. Well, it certainly sounds powerful. If it happens in 20 minutes, then. <laughs> yeah, it's very, power- it's very, very intense, very intense. Interesting, very intense. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> once you do it, the first time I did it, I was like, oh God, what am I doing? The second time I said, oh, it's great. The third time I was like, nothing's happening. They had to, they had to go up to like, I think it was like 14, you know, dots, which is unheard of, I guess, but been doing it for 16 years so I guess after a while you get a little immune (laughs) (laughs) well I certainly love learning new information and I didn't I wasn't aware of this cleanse process until I heard it from you yeah but you know just to pivot back a little bit you know as I was sharing with you I have a special heart for for veterans you know I want to know you know what would you share are some of your greatest lessons that you can share with us from being in in combat and just kind of coming back and now being a veteran I mean what even led you to join the military I'm always interested in people's stories well, I joined the military because I, I hated who I was. I hated where I was. I hated the fact that I couldn't become who I thought I was supposed to be because of my surroundings, put me into a box. You know, I had no self-pride, no self-belief, anything. You know, I was the guy that lost every game that I was ever in for any sport that I played. I was the worst one on the team. And I believed that too. So obviously I was. And, and as soon as I could, I joined the army to get out. And I remember going into boot camp. And when I went to the, the barber, they started shaving my head. I was like, this is the new me. Everything I always wanted to do, everything I wanted to be from now on, it's going to be me. And then, of course, it didn't work out right away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't just change like that. But I, I came up against some obstacles and I came up against some challenges where I mastered them to the point where in, in seconds, where I realized, and specifically in one, where I, I was like, man, that was me the whole time, just holding me back. And from that point on, I, you know, strived to be and was pretty much a stellar soldier. Um, going through going through the military, then of course in Iraq, you have other experiences uh, that challenge you psychologically. You know, also as a leader, you know, you're stuck in the desert with no creature comforts for months on end, um, and not even food or water sometimes. And this was before we had uh, any experience in the in the Middle East, so it was all a big cluster. And you know, I I told the story very often about the little girl that I met in the desert after the ceasefire outside of Basra. And she was burned from head to toe. And she was walking in the, in the desert with this woman. And we could only bandage her up and then send her back into the desert, which was heartbreaking to me. Uh, I was 23 years old, wearing a helmet, carrying an M16, camouflage, big guy, 6'4". And here's this little girl, you know, I sent her to the medics and I had her bandaged up. And uh, she came back out. And I, just, I wanted to hug her. I wanted to take her home and, you know, make her life better. And you can't, of course. Um, you learn to sort of push that stuff away when you're in battle. And uh, I, all I had was a piece of butterscotch candy in my grenade pocket. So I pulled out this piece of candy and I gave it to her and she was holding it like, you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah, open it. And she opened it and put it in her mouth. And this is a girl who was burned from her neck down, uh, clothes stuck to her in the middle of the desert. Her city was burning. She couldn't go back. And she smiled. Um, I've probably the one lesson that sticks with me in my entire life when anything goes wrong or when I think something goes wrong or when I feel that something's not right or I feel bad or I'm depressed or whatever, I think of her, you know, and I think, man, a piece of candy. She smiled. She had nothing, less than nothing. And, and she smiled. So things like that really, really calm. But, you know, a lot of people would push that away because they feel helpless in that case. I did, but I wanted to show her there was empathy. Someone cared. There was love out there that there's actually, you know, people out there that aren't, you know, wanting to hurt her or her family. And I, that's all I have with that piece of candy. So it's, 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 it's very symbolic for me. 
um, I carry it to this day. I'm almost every day I think of her. I'd love to meet her again. I'll tell you, <laughs> been putting that out there on the radio since uh, since on every podcast I've ever been on. Uh, I always talk about that. So if she's watching or someone's watching that knows her, yeah. That is a powerful story. I mean, yeah. you just embodied, you know, in the moment when you have nothing, so to speak, to take away someone's pain, you leaned into her in the most simplest fashion. And what I hear in that story is that she felt seen, right? Even with the little piece of candy as a, as a symbol of, I see you and just to give that gift, you know, and I pray and hope that one day that someone hears that story because I, I also heard you you mention it in the sense of, and I also appreciate, especially when people can be so vulnerable in their sharing of their story, because I think what it ha what happens is when people hear that it inspires them to do the same. Yeah. And one of the things I, I heard you say, um, I probably, I think it was actually this morning. And if you can speak a little bit to that, because I think a lot of people, you know, when it comes to Memorial Day, and especially being a veteran have lost you know, people that they once were um, traveling with that became friends with. So, you know, people sometimes and uh, especially American culture, we're having barbecues and we're swimming, right? Where there's a lot of people that have um, PTSD or depression or anxiety can can right. spark up from, from memories. And, you know, I think when people, especially veterans speak up about their experiences, it helps heal not just other veterans, but other people that they have nothing to be ashamed about. You know, I would love to kind of hear some of your your thoughts around that. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it was a really tough day for me yesterday, I got to tell you. Um, uh, on Monday, it was a really tough day. I, I, I don't usually fall into depression anymore. I still, have, I still battle PTSD, but it was really bad yesterday. It, it hit me like a storm. It really did. And I don't know if it was, you know, because it, it was close to the anniversary of, of, of when I came back from Iraq. I got back from Iraq on 18th of May, 1991. And I had lost a friend over there, Sergeant Young M. Dillon. And I lost him right in front of me. I, I watched him as he died. And his, his um, the look that he gave me um, was like, don't screw this up, man. You know? And... Uh, Yeah, I carry that with me to this day too. Um, and, and I try not to screw up. And I, as a matter of fact, what I do, I do for him and the others that we lost, um, known and unknown. Uh, but unfortunately, I've lost more friends to suicide than I have in the war. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's almost a monthly occasion, you know, occurrence. And so every time you lose someone like that, you, you feel a little more guilty, you know, survival guilt specifically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to tell you, my first thought when Sergeant Dillon died in front of me, and this is the lowest of low, it was, thank God that's not me, you know? And, and it just like, I, I was, I turned into a traitor to him in that moment, it seemed to me. And uh, self-preservation, you can say whatever you want, but it just, it just doesn't feel right, you know? And so I battled with that for years and years and years. I'm pretty much over that, I think. Um, but the fact that his eyes said to me, you know, I'm, I'm going and you're staying, don't F this up, you know, so powerful. And, and, and I, I believe he was saying that, you know, I, I really do. I mean, we were great friends too. I mean, we spent every, every chow time together. Every time we met for chow, you know, we, we spent together. So, you know, to me, that's like a mentor moment just like the little girl's mentor moment. And I call those up uh, almost um, now it's been so long, almost um, just by auto it's on, you know, automation that it comes up whenever I have hard times or I wonder like what the, you know, what's going on. And, and I got to tell you, I had a, I had an Iraqi veteran, Iraqi freedom veteran call me in tears. And he said, look, I, I can't do this anymore, man. I can't, I'm successful in business, but I lost six guys, you know, of my team. And I, I don't know why I'm here and I'm successful and they're not. And it just, it just reminded me of Sergeant Dillon. And I said, they're sitting up there playing spades or blackjack right now, or sort of spades or dominoes right now, looking down at you saying, don't screw this up. And on, I didn't realize it would have that much of an impact, but that changed him completely. And he said, yeah, man, you're right. They are up there, aren't they? 
and, and he, he just started crushing it from then on. It's literally that one thing, you know, it makes a difference sometimes that you would never think. So yeah, it's, um, and I could go on, you know, uh, but I think you get the point that it's a daily battle. You know, I've been out of the military for almost 30 years now and it's, it's a daily thing. It's uh, every single day I think of it, you know, and I, I turn it into my power. I turn it into my superpower. I turn it into my consciousness. I turn it into my, my uh, vulnerability. I turn it into something that's useful for everything every day of the week. But yesterday, sorry, on Monday, it was, man, it was, uh, it was tough. It was really, really tough. But my wife, she's amazingly supportive and she saw something was going on and she realized, oh, today's Memorial Day. Living in Hungary, it's not a holiday. And then she said, is everything okay? And I can tell you're different and stuff. So, you know, it's great to have a support structure around you as well. Absolutely. That support structure matters. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing your vulnerability because a lot of times people that come back, you know, I can never personally understand that experience. I've not been a veteran. I'm not gone to war, but I've sat with lots of people through the years that have and, and just sitting and holding space for them. A lot of times people feel that survivor's guilt and there's lots of shame to even speak some of the words and things that they have um, experienced. So I think when you do that, you know, in that honoring of, um, you know, young Dylan, that you are making an impact, right? Because you're speaking about his life. You're speaking about the last moments being there and being the last person to, to be with him on this earth. I mean, that's a very, no one will ever understand that except you, yeah. right? So to have people around you who can support you and hold space for you and you speak it because then it loses that internal battle. Yes. And then you continue to, to move forward with that, you know, because sometimes some of the veterans I've worked with will describe to me that the most vulnerable moments for them are in the moments. Sometimes it's even in the middle of the night when life is the most quietest and they can't sleep and images and thoughts and even having a support system or a wife or a partner that's, that's next to them, they still feel alone. And, you know, so, yeah. you know, with, with looking at some of the work that you do and coming together and bringing veterans together, I think it's so, so powerful. And it's so, I think we need even more of that, Stephen, is my thought. Well, we have, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I feel alone. I mean, I feel alone all the time. Yeah, I, I do, but I, I've, I've made it my power, you know. Um, I have an amazing relationship with my wife. There's certain things that she doesn't talk about, certain things that I don't talk about. It's a discussion and it's done. We deal with those things ourselves or with a, someone like talking to you right now, for instance. Um, and we want to preserve a certain part of our life that's just pristine, if you will, for our children and everything. But um, we, we founded, well, when I was in Peru, I had a, 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 actually a voice that said, write this down. And I was like, okay, I was working on San Pedro and I wrote down have. And now we were always looking for a way to um, sort of combine the humble alpha, the book and the veteran movement without making it look sort of like we're trying to profit from whatever. And I wrote down have, and I was like, have what, have it all. And I said, look at it. And I looked at it and it was like H A V E humble alpha veteran empowerment. And so we founded sort of a, just a movement. Uh, we spoke it into reality, um, made a logo, popped it on our, in our group. And these guys went completely nuts. We have shirts, we have swag, we have hats. They do their own missions now. Um, so, so here's a, for instance, if you can't see on the radio, but if you're watching on Facebook, you can see it. There's the logo, Humble Alpha Veteran Empowerment. This is the hat they sent me. They all signed it, right? And this was the first mission. So this is mission 001, April 16th to the 18th, 2021. No organization, no call to action, nothing. We created something where all veterans, no matter who you are, where you're from, what company you have, whatever, this isn't a logo that you need to use to promote us. This is a logo you use to show cohesion with every other veteran out there. And it just took off by itself within days. So the have missions and the have, we actually have a have investment fund, Humble Alpha Veteran Empowerment Investment Fund um, that's going into reggae um, here hopefully soon. And, and so that, that was sort of addressing that because we have the, the, the Vetpreneur Tribe, it's only 15,000 people. We have the Warrior Council, it's only 100 people. You know, veterans read our books and stuff, but we wanted to have that larger impact, but we can't do it on our own. You need to empower others. That's where the Humble Alpha comes in, right? How do you empower others to see what you see, right? And allow them to act as they are and be who they are. So for instance, you know, you have a company, you have a construction company or you have a, a boutique or whatever, and you wanna 
show that you support veterans and that you support them in a way that is a giving way and not charity because the veterans hate charity right so veterans like they hate giveaways right um it's and even when you say thank you to a lot of veterans they're like oh don't thank me you know which i think i always say be gracious because you're robbing the person who's saying thank you of that moment of joy that they, they can have for something that they could have never done and so that's sort of what i teach but yeah it's 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 actually astonishing how how much how quick it took off they just had to like i don't know mission four or eight or whatever it was this weekend I didn't even know about it until I saw the pictures. You know, they just, it's just happening. It's just happening. And this is wonderful because we can bring all the veterans together. You can stay in your groups and your nonprofits and stuff, but just this identifier, half, mm -hmm. you can have it all as a veteran. That is wonderful. And I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to share those links out because I uh, right. believe in uh, collective and community. And speaking of Humble Alpha, you know, when I heard the title of your book, um, actually heard other people talking about it, it wasn't even you. And it, it yeah. parked my, it um, it sparked my attention because normally, especially in today's society, Stephen, um, Alpha normally gets a negative uh, connotation uh, for females or males. So when I heard Humble Alpha, it kind of sparked my, um, my attention so tell us a little bit about like who or what is a is a humble yeah. alpha well I, let's to break it down we have we have three pages in the book that says a humble alpha is humble alpha is a humble alpha is and we specifically wrote the book for men and and i gotta i gotta tell the truth we wrote it for men because i knew if we wrote it for men all the women would want to read it <laughs> so <laughs> about exactly 60 yeah <laughs> so about 60 60 percent of our readers are women so our support <laughs> And a humble alpha is basically someone who has all the power on the inside. We call it your nuclear reactor, right? On, on the inside and they're humble on the outside. They don't have to show who they are. They don't have to talk about who they are. They don't have to talk about and, and blow and gloat and scream and yell. And their, their presence speaks for itself. So when a humble alpha walks into a room, say a meeting room or a networking room, people turn and like, who's that? No word said. And that's not something you project. That's, that's something that's amplified automatically through knowing your identity, your purpose, creating certainty, and then your purpose amplifies that identity and with a certainty. And when you're on a call or you're speaking to somebody on stage, people buy into your certainty before they buy your product. If you're not certain of who you are and your purpose and your product or your service doesn't align with that, there's going to be some incongruencies there and people are going to be like, I, it sounds good, but even even if it's not conscious, they'll be like, something's not, that's why some people sell amazingly and some people don't. Even if it's not a great product, a lot of times someone who's so certain of themselves, people seeking certainty will, run, will flock to them. I won't name any names, but there's people out there that sell a lot of courses that are just, in my opinion, not the right course, put it that way, for these people. But because they're so certain of it, people are flocking to it. So when you're certain yourself, and this is what we teach you in the book, um, all of that falls away. You see inconsistencies immediately. You see incongruencies. You see fakes immediately. I mean, you see it immediately. As a matter of fact, on Clubhouse, that's probably the number one thing that people write me about is that, man, it's like you're, you just talk. You're not presenting. You're not trying to be somebody. You're just talking. What is it in your voice that makes you so clear? Well, first of all, I'm concise and clear. Second of all, I don't use I don't use jargon or buzzwords or I don't use filler words like uh, mm, uh well you know uh, mm, you know no fluff and I'm certain of what I'm talking about and I only talk about of what I'm certain about go figure you know so you know if you look at the impact that that and I think Clubhouse really showed another level of of how important the voice and the tonality is and the clarity is uh, because that's all you have on that amp and so it's it's fascinating to me to see. I'd say 70, 80% of all the people that write me make that comment about my voice and my clarity. And it's not because I'm smart, believe me. You know, it's, it's literally because I choose and I know what I'm gonna say before I say it, right? Even now, I know what's, what I, what I wanna say to the subject matter you have. I'm not gonna guess, if I don't know, then I'll stop talking. I'm not gonna, um, uh, well, you know, um, you know it's, it's, just, it's just not me. And when you train yourself to be like that or you're disciplined enough, that discipline turns into habit and that habit turns into routines and then it's a part of who you are it's your life and i absolutely uh co-signed everything that you're saying because um as an observer of who you were way before i got connected right i believe right. in um consistency and observing people and to your point then you 
will flush out people who really are sincere to those that um, are that know how to sell uh, to, yeah. to your to your point. You know, and when I hear humble alpha and, and not only you, but other people who I would put in this category, you know, when I think of, for example, working with personality disorders like narcissism, when they walk into the room, they have to announce themselves, they have to be the loudest voice, they're constantly talking. Um, well, someone who is confident in who they are and they show up. And I also hear for practicality in humble alpha is that they're not going to argue with fools. <laughs> no. no. And, and you know, the back channels of uh, Clubhouse are full of that. Um, you know, and, and people say like, why don't you ever engage? I said, why? What's the point? I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let any of my energy go for that. And that's, the, that's, the, that's the power on the inside. That's my power to give as I see fit. I'm not going to give it to negativity. I'm not going to give it to haters. I'm not going to give it to people that want to just complain about other people. It's not going to happen, which allows me to be, um, if I may, an excellent, impactful advisor for businesses and, and business owners and entrepreneurs. Lane and myself, we are, we hold that power for those who are ready for it and say, I, I want to grow. And that's who we invest in. We call it investing in relational capital. We don't invest in anything where there's no return. We don't invest in anything where they're not going to grow, where they're not going to expand, where they're not going to learn. You know, um, we don't, we don't necessarily look for that reciprocal. We don't, uh, cause the law of reciprocity says it's going to come from somewhere. So that's, that's enough. And that's the certainty that I need. Uh, it's enough for me to invest in somebody. So this is, this is something that, uh, I think, um, is missing in a lot of places in our world that people are con especially now people are constantly engaging in useless conversations that only upset both parties, three parties, four parties, four parties, whatever it is. And I get along fine without engaging myself. I have my opinions. But they're my opinions. And the word my indicates they're mine. So if I want to share them, <laughs> I mean, then I choose to share them in a positive way in the right setting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break. And we certainly appreciate all the gems and knowledge that our guest, Stephen Kuhn, is sharing with us. So we'll be right back. Let's talk about it with Janie Lacey. Are you often attracted to unavailable partners? Feel like you can't stay but can't leave a toxic relationship? Obsessed with thinking about a current or former lover? Feel resentful that you're always taking care of the other person? The Woman Redeemed Therapy Program is for women who want to break free from toxic relationship patterns so they can find the love they truly deserve. This program is a safe, nurturing environment, essential for building self-worth and acquiring the tools to work through challenges and create your best self. We invite you to begin the journey today to start building the new you. Call 407-622-1770 or visit LifeCounselingSolutions.com. That's LifeCounselingSolutions.com. You are listening to Let's Talk About It with Dr. Janie Lacey. To reach the show today, please call into 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. You may also send an email to Janie at lifecounselingsolutions.com. Now back to Let's Talk About It. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It with Janie Lacey. We are here with our esteemed guest, Stephen Kuhn, and we're talking about unleashing your humble alpha. Unleash your humble alpha. So, you know, we were talking a little bit about the difference of um, how to recognize or who or what a humble alpha was. I kind of put the other side of it, um, a lot of narcissism in our right. world, a lot of people who are fruit pickers and not fruit planters, you know, in that sense. And uh, using discernment is another word that comes to mind for me and, and discerning, observing people, seeing what they're consistent about and relational capital. I mean, you just mentioned that you talk about it. There's a chapter in the book about, about that and vetting people is another word that comes to mind, not arguing with fools, all the things that we're talking about. But you know, I want to know if you can share with us a brief um, 
synopsis, you know, when people are interested um, in this humble alpha journey, you know, I know in the book, I've read the book, you've discussed the five uh, stages. And I want to know if you can kind of take us a little bit on a journey, give people a little bit of a preview of what they have to experience at each step, or do we have to sure. do all steps? Or is there a certain um, order? Good, great question. Well, it's a cascading book. So that means each chapter builds upon the other chapter or well, section, I guess it would call it. It's not really a chapter. Each section builds upon the other section, right? So you, you actually want to go through as many sections as you can in order. And more importantly than that, actually take time to do the action steps at the end of each section. Those action steps are going to get you where you need to go. And it's, it's not a how-to book. It's a what-to book, right? So we're telling you what to do to unleash your personal humble alpha, what you do to unleash your personal joy, your freedom, whatever it is that you, you seek. And so we break that down into five sections. The first one's called activate. And that's, um, you know, activate your true identity, know who you are and how you interact in the world. Right. And it's like, you ask your questions like, how do I treat people? How do I treat strangers? How do I treat my dog? You know, how do I treat my kids? And you're going to, you have to give yourself an honest answer. We talk about, you know, honesty, integrity, and transparency, which is one of our um, core principles is, is our core principles of the whole book and everything, how we lead our lives. Then we have unleash, unleash your purpose in life. Know what you do in the world that makes you feel alive. Mm. That's that purpose, right? Where, what is it? Well, you probably won't find it to the, to the degree that you would if you knew who you were, right? For real. Mm. Then we have empower, create space and elevate all those within your life enterprise so that all can step into their greatness. And so this is about your life enterprise. We always say that you're the CEO of your own life enterprise, just like a CEO of a business enterprise, you answer to the board of directors and the shareholders and stakeholders, right? Board of directors is your family, of course, and the shareholders and stakeholders is everyone else in your life. And how, how does a CEO treat, you know, work with the board of directors? And they're, they're servants, right? Servant leaders, right? They, they have to contribute. They have to elevate. They have to ensure that the company is profitable and healthy. Same thing with a uh, CEO of your own life enterprise. Your life has to be profitable and healthy. It's the same thing. So we talk about that, the empower stage. Then we have the momentum stage, and that's amplifying your purpose by igniting the fire within others with partnership investing in, and investing in relational capital. This is where you expand on your knowledge and um, the, the experience you have, and you give to others freely with no expectations, focusing only on the only thing that we control, and that is the intention. We don't control the outcome. So don't waste any time on that. Don't get upset about it. Focus on the intention and the certainty that you create through your identity and your purpose. Focusing on that intention will drive you through. And we talk about imperfect action, right? Taking imperfect action as you move forward, creating as you go, knowing that certainty is going to carry you to where you're supposed to go, which you have a general idea of, but it could be to the left, it could be to the right, whatever it is, but you're certain you're going to get there. And that's the whole key thing about it. And all of that leads to one thing, and that's quality of life. Right. And that's fully enjoying every moment of your life, no matter what activity you're in. So there, there are the five stages. In the end, if you want to look at the overview of it, it's all about identity, purpose, and certainty. All right. Certainty allows you to let go of the how you're going to do anything. Because when you're certain about it, you know it's going to happen. So you don't have to worry about how you're going to do it. You just drive forward in perfect action, focus on the intention, forget about any expectations, and move forward. And that's how we do every day. Lane and I, you know, we, we, we show up some days and go like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. You know, it's like, <laughs> what? You know, and, but it's just because it's on our path. It's our intention. And we don't go head down to the grindstone. We don't hustle and grind because that, that's, everyone says laser focus. Well, you might want to have a laser intention, a laser focus intention, but your view has to be macro because you, this is where everything happens. It doesn't happen in front of you. It happens around you. Every person you meet, like we're speaking right now through Clubhouse, every person you meet is a door to a new possible reality. And when you, when you embrace that and, and actually love it, then your life, your life expands like crazy. And this is why, I don't know, I have, I have like 50,000 contacts that just, I, literally any question you have. Any, and that's why we're so, such great advisors, because I can solve literally almost any problem on the planet. And I just need to make a call to know somebody who knows somebody or I know them directly. And that's all through investing in relational capital. Elevating others, right? Treating it like my life enterprise, like a business and investing in them and making sure that they're elevated, leaving people in a better place than when I met them, whether it's a minute, a day or a week or a year, you know, leave them in a better place. Ensure that when you walk away, people are like, man, that person, like, I, that, that person makes me feel good. 
you know, and, and you don't do it for the reaction. You do it because it's the right thing to do. Because as you said in the very beginning, the only true impact you're going to have in this world is in your world. You have that direct line of impact. What can you impact? Now, it's like people say to me, global warming or global change and all this kind of stuff. And you got to, you know, this, that, and the other, and we're going to fight emissions. And, and I say, do you recycle? Well, you know, it's not mandatory. I'm like, well, hey, look, you know, the only change you're going to make is direct line of impact. So when you start recycling and, you know, uh, you can come and talk to me about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't try to get others to do what you're not doing. And don't, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of people want to join the big movements and, and feel right. because they're looking for purpose. Right. And here we go back to that again. They're looking for purpose but they're not implementing it in their own life. They want to be a part of something that makes them feel better. And I get it. I was there. I've done it to a degree sometimes still. And when you know how you as an individual fit into that movement and how you can implement something in your direct life to, to facilitate change in what we call radiant value and the ring, the, you know, the, the, the ring effect. And when you throw a pebble in a pond, you create radiant value when you do something good, when you do something that's impactful, others will see that and do it too. And they will, and that ring will continue. That's how you create impact. That's what we talk about in the book. And that's, what's so incredible when you hear someone, you know, a, a year later after we, we wrote the book, someone said, you know, I, so-and-so I saw this and then I saw your video and my son saw it and this happened and he did this and that, and this, and it was like 10 people away. They're getting effects that I would never have gotten if I would, if I'd have went out and the big thing, I had to start with me. Start with you and be yeah. intentional is what yes. I'm hearing in your summation. And then I also hear, you know, when you're a humble alpha, that you can also be curious. And that's where you're getting the contacts. You're curious about people without losing yourself. And, you know, you describe that in the book. I'm just putting it in my words. But when you don't lose yourself and you have that curiosity, you can still have discernment. You can still vet people. You can still move in moderation, observe people who they are. And, um, and then be able to to make that that greater well, impact. If, if I can touch on that real quick, it's it's key what you said there, because if, I, if I, first of all, curiosity creates empathy, right? It breeds empathy. The more curious I am about somebody, the more empathy I have for them. That's a good thing, right? But empathy can be um, abused, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times when people are looking, they're seeking with an, with an expectation. Okay, so I'm looking at this guy, I'm going to this meeting and I'm expecting this. Well, an expectation is a guaranteed letdown unless it's verbalized. So you have two choices, no expectations, or you verbalize them to the person directly. Otherwise, forget about it. Otherwise, you're just going to be upset and disappointed. And that goes with your husband or wife, all the way up to the board meeting, all the way to a keynote speech. You know, and so, so when you're out there and your, your intention is to elevate others, to invest in relational capital, you know, to create space for those around you so they can step into the greatness, there can't be any expectation tied to it. There can't be, unless it's a business, and of course, a business transaction, then of course, there's expectations that are usually written down and that's okay. And this is where it goes wrong for a lot of people is negative, ne negative people won't even approach me mm -hmm. because my integrity is intact and I will not. It's, it's undeniably the one thing that I will not do and that is compromise my integrity. Integrity is the one thing that every healthy relationship on the planet has. It must have. So whether it's business or private or love life or relationship, whatever it is, that's the one thing that makes the difference between a true relationship and a leveraged relationship. So that's, we, we really focus on that. And when you're like that and I'm helping you and we're talking to each other and you feel no expectation from me at all because I'm creating space for us to create together, mm -hmm. I know and I'm certain that the outcome is going to be beneficial for both of us. Whether you get all the money from the profits or whatever, and I get the connection to the manufacturer, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter unless we discuss it and we verbalize it. It's amazing. When you live like this, you know, I got to tell you, Dr. Dr. Lacey, I, I can't tell you the joy that I have in my life every single day when I talk to people on Zoom and I talk to three new people every single day and I never have to go out and look for people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's such a joy just to help somebody and say, have a great day and see you later. And then you hear about it months down the road about how the set of the others happening. And then it comes back to you through someone else. It's like, it's incredible. And to be able to live free of expectation, my God, it's amazing. It's it just, I swear 25% of your brain is empty for the day. 
suddenly you're like, I have time to think. Like, what's going on? Why is my brain empty? Because you're not worried about what people are doing, if they're going to get you back, if they're going to do this. What, what, you know, none, what are they saying? Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. It's amazing. <laughs> well, I certainly even felt that. So I'll probably be meditating on something that you just said, because I always um, pick up on what resonates in my own energy. And that was, you know, that you're so sure of who you are, that negative people don't even approach you because nope. you're intact. <laughs> so yeah. That's There's power in that. And I think I needed to repeat that because I think someone needs to hear that. You know, when you're so sure of who you are, it's like that magnetic force field yep. keeps the bad stuff out because they just know that you are a person of integrity and person of self-assurance, self-assurance. Yeah. knowing who you are and um i mean so so powerful so yeah. so, with that, so so with that being said help us um because i like the one thing that i like about your book and i 100 percent encourage everyone to um purchase it you know as as we have um is that you give actionable steps right so it's right. not just the theories but you giving you're giving us things to do to 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 think about so one of the things that I just heard you say, and I also heard you continuously um, mention in different conversations, is that importance around people answering that question about who they are and help, help I, today you're gonna help someone. So help okay. someone understand if, if they answer, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom, I'm a, you know, all these, gen, right. these roles, how right. can they discover their actionable steps today? Like who really are they? So they can start showing up in that powerful way that the force field keeps right. the bad stuff out. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, and what if it, it doesn't matter what, if you buy the book or the audible, you'll get a workbook to go with either you're writing the book or you get a downloadable PDF. But um, basically, it's it's a few steps that you would take um, to, to get you there. And the first one would be to decide, right? Decide fully today. There's no turning back. Like I'm becoming who I'm supposed to be. You've decided to become a humble alpha, which is your version of you, right? And it's final. You fully committed your, yourself to completing all the action steps in the book or whatever you're going to do. So. First thing you got to do is let go of your old identity. So it's critical for your growth. Along with these steps, we have, you know, we have strategies that let, allow you to physically let go of your old identity. Um, and, and letting go doesn't mean forgetting it. It means not letting it dictate who you are today. And old means past. And as long as you lean on the past, the future is going to look like the past. And that's why people get caught in these loops, right? You got to create a new one. You got to figure out who you really are based upon your experiences from the old identity. So for instance, you can identify, list all the aspects of your identity that you want to let go of, write out all that you can think of, be very, very clear of what they are. Like when I left for the army, I knew what I was letting go of. You know, I, I, I knew that what I was letting go of. I was 18 years old and 19 years old. Once you write those all down, accept it, sit down and think about them and accept the things you're letting go of and say, yeah, I got to let go of that. Um, and then appreciate, fully appreciate these aspects for what they are and how they got you to where you are today to be able to even sit down and appreciate them. You, you see, it's, it's, a, it's a loop, right? But appreciating them and letting them go, they're still there, right? They're a part of who you are, but they're not dictating your future anymore. Then, of course, you got to activate your humble alpha. And that takes one to three hours to complete, so to say. And this is where you define your two-word two moniker of your personality. So define your house. How do you treat yourself? How do you treat your mind? How do you treat your body? How do you treat your family and friends? How do you treat strangers? How do you treat your business? And this is just the minimum. You can have all kinds of how do you treat? How do you treat my dog? And how do I treat the neighbors? And be truthful about this. How do you treat them? Do you look at them with disdain? Are they, do your dogs always barking next door? So you're mad at the neighbor because of his dog and has nothing to do with him. You know, it's, it's just how, how is that affecting your mood and your vibe? And you're, um, um, I'm thinking of German all of a sudden, I don't know why, uh, <laughs> Ausstrahlung in German, uh, okay. your, your, your aura, I guess you could say, right? And then begin to live by that identity. And, and I want to give you, well, uh, and anyway, so that, that's the basic steps of the first chapter. So let go of your old, uh, first decide, let go of your old, old identity and activate your humble alpha by asking the how questions. And there's so, something you, you said that I want to um, highlight that people can look and see where they've been without absor absorbing it to stay stuck. It's almost like they can observe it in order to define where they wanna go without absorbing it. And, and you said it, um, I'm just gonna say it differently. I think that's part of what can keep people stuck is they absorb that yeah. stuff that they should have left behind and not knowing how to separate it, to observe it, almost right. to kind of study themselves. Well, it's guilt, it's shame, it's revenge, it's frustration, you know, all those things that people hold on to mostly. And all you're doing is hurting yourself. You're not hurting the other person. That's for damn sure, right? 
And, and so when you look back in the life, you say, well, well, look, I mean, when, when you get a food in front of you that you don't eat, you don't like, what do you do? You pick the good things out, right? You eat the tomato and the salad, but you don't eat the, of the beans or whatever. That's what you do with your pants. Take the good things out that elevated you, that made you feel good, that made you feel powerful, and use them as a part of who you are and use, use the positivity. I'd say it's like me with the military. You know, I use the things that I find positive in order to drive me forward. I don't look at the bad things every day. I try not to, you know. And no, I don't try. I don't look at them. Sometimes they show up and I'll, and I'll address them. You have to embrace it, of course. You have to work through it. And then, of course, it goes. But I've gotten down to a, a science where I have my way to deal with it. It's actually a physical thing for me when, when this PTSD pops its head. So, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, the book is, and, and I don't, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but the book we never wrote, we never sat down and said, let's write an instructional book. We literally talked about our lives and said, how did I always win in these situations? Why did I lose in these situations? And what were the connectors? What, what was the repeating factor? So we found the things that made us lose and we found the things that made us win, made it successful. And that's what we talked about. And then when we talked about it, we said, well, one thing that always bugged us about self-help books, and this isn't a self-help book, like I said, but it's a how-to book, is that they, they, they're wonderful and you're motivated. You're like, oh, this is great. And you're like, but how, what, how do I implement it? Like, you know, so we said, we got to put action steps in there. And that turned out to be the key because again, Forbes, business school MBA program picked it up as a part of their full curriculum. University of Colorado picked it up as a part of their curriculum. Now uh, it's a, even our digital course online, which is on the LMS system of a, of a college is a college certificate program. So when you take the humble alpha college course, you can get this at humble alpha book.com. You can buy the books, see stories and all kinds of stuff. Humble alpha book.com. You get the first section for free, by the way, and you get a free excerpt of the book as well. So everybody who's watching is you actually get a college certificate. So it's, it's a real certification, academically accredited course. And it's literally straight from the book. <laughs> There's like no, it wasn't rebuilt or it's literally straight from the book. And that's astonishing to me, but it's proof of certainty in action. We knew that the message was going to have an impact. We didn't know how big, but we knew it was going to change the paradigm of leadership. And we still uh, are on that mission today. We've got six more books to write. Uh, we got a coaching and training program coming out for certification for Humble Alpha coaches. We have the Humble Alpha Paradigm Upgrade Advisory Program. Uh, we were going to take 10 people, 70 people showed up. <laughs> so we're working that out right now. And, and this is, we don't have a funnel, we don't have a website, none of that stuff for, for any of the advisory programs or anything because we're, we're not, that's not our business, right? Our business is helping people get to where they need to be to be the best version of themselves and actually crush it with ease. And not with hustling and grinding, those two words that someone made up to make you feel better about working way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate you saying that. And you can toot your horn. I mean, because obviously um, there's no doubt that you have a receipts. I mean, universities, working with celebrities, and you've paid your dues to our country. I mean, you've done so much. So I think you deserve everything that's coming your way. And I appreciate you helping us and sharing it, not only through um, this, uh, this book, but everything that you have to come. You know, and, and in the humble alpha, you know, one of um, someone I was working with had gotten upset with me, Stephen, in a good way, because I was talking to her about finding her purpose. And she almost said to me, she's like, Janie, I almost wish that you didn't ask me that question because yeah. it's been on my mind ever since, right? Because sometimes it, it serves people to stay in, in denial. And I know you talked about that second stage of becoming a humble alpha and it's all about that unleashing. And I just love that, that word unleashing. It just um, it right. resonates with me. So when we're unleashing, you talk about releasing from the restraint. And I hear a lot of the things that we've, we've already just kind of touched on, but can you share with us, I mean, what is or can or has restrained us and in particular how that can hinder people from as i just mentioned finding their purpose or discovering their purpose you know whatever the words we want to use yeah which i know is just throughout this book which resonated um with me especially that unleashing part well unleashing um, um indicates it's already within you that's the first thing that you got to realize your purpose is already within you uh the biggest reason the biggest thing that i see is people seek on the outside for the purpose purpose is on the inside and that's why we say unleash because it's within. So as long as you're looking on the outside, matter of fact, anything on the outside is a distraction from who you are unless you know who you are. Anything on the outside is a distraction of your purpose unless you know your purpose. So some people get lucky and they, they meet and match their purpose. 
Um, I mean, I, we've talked to business. I mean, I've built a billionaire that I work with and she, she's sort of mad at me because she realized all the stuff she was doing where she was super successful isn't her purpose. And now she's changing and like changing everything, you know, and like, like gone off grid completely. I, it, it's, you know, and she's sort of like, well, man, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't expecting this. And I said, look, are you happier? Said, Hell yeah, I'm happy. You know, so looking on the outside is the, 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 the number one issue that I see, the challenge that I see with people finding their purpose, because we're, we're taught that find your purpose it's on the outside. Your purpose is aligned with your identity. Like I'm the powerful connector. That's my two word moniker. So when I'm doing mergers and acquisitions, when I'm working in the investment fund, when I'm working in the veteran space, when I'm on clubhouse, what do I always do? I connect people. So when I know that, that crystallizes my purpose in front of me. And I earn a lot of money from, clinic, um, from connecting people. Why? Because that's my freaking purpose, right? Connecting people for what? In the humble alpha method, in, the, in, you know, in, in empowering themselves to be the best version of themselves, you know? Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it is absolutely amazing. My, my One of my mentors in the past had, had told me this, and it's exactly what we're talking about, that talent can make you lots of money, but your purpose can get you lots of impact. <laughs> there you <laughs> because go. it's coming from within. And I just thought that was so, so powerful. But that, that the, and you know, money is the result, like true, true wealth is a result of your purpose, mm -hmm. of living your purpose. It really, it's the, the difference between earning money and being wealthy. At some point, it's, they, it's all encompassing. It's all encompassing. Absolutely. You know? At some point, they get married. <laughs> yep. so, so talk to us a little bit. You know, I'm in the healing space, so I always like these types of terms. But talk to us the importance about the humble alpha being able to create space for others and why right. this is one of the key factors to unlocking leadership in, in particular. Um, <laughs> well, creating space is probably the most powerful concept. In the, in the entire book and creating space is simple showing up wholly and fully for the person in front of you with no cookie cutter solutions or preconceived notions no expectations mm -hmm. focusing only on that one intention of adding value which could be usually is by solving problems and when you do this with no expectations or cookie cutter solutions the person in front of you is like falling into an open door right and they feel at ease and they feel calm and they go, wow, we're so connected. This is fantastic. And, and you suddenly come together and start creating something that neither one of you would have created on your own or solutions that you never would have found on your own. That's creating space. And I mean, it works at the airport checking in to get a free upgrade, right? I mean, it works, right? It works in this situation here where we have a flowing conversation that we didn't plan before. It works sale, if, if you're selling, you don't have to sell when you create space right? Because you're creating a solution together. And that's, it just, just, just imagine, we, we come together for the first time, I, I, I meet you and I go, hey, hey, doc, what's going on? What's the word? You know, we just start talking. I have no agenda, right? I have no wishes, wants, or needs at this moment. Not at all. I'm here to add value to you. What can I do? And you're, you're just like, whoa, a lot, a lot of people are like, okay, where's this going kind of thing. And they're the kind of people I say, look, you're going to get one chance with this right here, right? So let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're sarcastic and you, and you, don't, you don't believe it, then it's not going to work anyway. So, you know, let's go. I don't tell them I'm creating space, but, you know, they, they, get the, they get the vibe. And some people hang up or go off the call and they're just like, you know, a two, two or three days later, they're like, you know, I have to apologize. I don't think, I, I, I think I was trying to get something or get somewhere. It seems like you, you weren't. You were just really there being nice. Like, yeah. That's what I do. That's how. And then I talk to him about the book and talk about the program. So, yeah, I mean, it's a powerful way to show up. It's a powerful way to show, uh, show up, Dr. Lacey. And I'll tell you the, the most powerful way. This is how I walked up to Mick Jagger or Olivia Newton-John or Andrea Bocelli and just started working for him. Just created space. It didn't matter to me. I had no expectations. I just, me talking to them, walking up to them and saying what I wanted to say, that was enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, so, it just so it turns out they felt that and they said, yeah, come work for me. You know, in our in our last uh, a few minutes, last two minutes, you know, one of the things I'm hearing in that example is also self trust, and I, I know you probably can't break this down in, in a minute or so, but you know, I do want you to talk a little bit about that hit. I love that um, acronym, the honesty, the integrity, and the transparency. Yeah. Why do you think that's so hard for people to get to that? Because when I hear you, not only your examples of going to celebrities, but knowing who you are, those things are almost like I see as pillars in that yes. humble alpha. They are the absolute pillars of humble alpha. 
honesty with yourself why you do say and think like you think, right? Or do what you do. Um, then transparency is how you step into the world with that honesty. And that's your, that's your reputation, right? The byproduct is integrity. And, and again, integrity is the basis of every healthy relationship. What that allows you to do is to be authentic. And authentic, being authentic allows you to dictate your market value, which is where the wealth comes from. You see, so HIT is an all-encompassing core foundation of, of, of principles, core, core principles. And you, you, I breezed over it, but you may have caught it. Honesty with yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not about honesty with the other people. Because when you're honest with yourself, you are honest, period. Right? If you're honest with yourself about everything that you do, you don't have to worry about being honest with other people because you are. You embody honesty. You embody integrity. And catching yourself. And being conscious of it when you're saying, why am I talking to you right now, right? Why, why am I saying the things I'm saying? Is it, for a good, is it for a good reason? Is it pure of thought? Is it pure of heart, right? Or is it I'm leveraging your platform so I can get something out of it? You know, it's like, and, and even if it's okay with you, I, I still have to be aware of that. Because if I'm not aware of that, you're going to feel I'm incongruent. Something's wrong. His, his vibe's off or something. And that's, that's where that confidence comes from. Being certain of who you are and certain that every, every move that I make, every word that comes out of my mouth, mostly, right, is spot on. And it's, it's tied to my intention. It's tied to my, my purpose or my identity. And so it's a one unit solution. We're not split. We can't be, you know, in three different places at one time. I can't be this person here and that person there. Integration through all aspects of life as the individual you are with a powerful purpose and a presence that you own. Hmm. With the presence that you own. Well, you know, I certainly uh, appreciate you um, embodying the hits and living that out for us and being an example and writing and co-writing the, the book. Nothing but um, was uh, was healing and thought provoking. And I'm looking forward to continue to share that. So with using a word that that you use often in the in the book, I mean, what's next for Stephen Kuhn as he amplifies his own purpose? <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, we're working on the on the investment fund uh, that'll be mergers and acquisitions. So we're going to have veteran. We're going to support veteran-owned businesses by through investment. Um, we have the six other books coming out. We have the certification program for Humble Alpha um, certification advisors, coaches, or trainers. Uh, we haven't figured it out yet, but we're working on it. Uh, and then, of course, the certainty is there to change the paradigm of leadership. Now, if that means keynote speech tour, then that's what it is. If it means you know um, an online whatever, then that's what it is. So far, um, we don't do the online funnel kind of thing. We don't do that at all. It's all in our groups and the people that know us and things like that. And we're, we're, we're building up massive momentum through this as well. But we work with a lot of um, very um, successful advisors or mentors or you know, people work with that aren't public, typically public figures. So they're not like, oh, I work with whoever, you know, Anthony Robbins or whatever, Tony Robbins. It's people that, for instance, ran Tony Robbins' company, who no one knows, but he ran it for 20 years, you know. So they're the kind of guys we work with, the kind of, kind of gals we work with. You know, we have a college dean. She was a dean of 10 universities. She works with us on this. We have a, um, a oil and gas ex-CFO. She's 62 years old. She works with us. You know, these are the kind of people we work with. Powerful, powerful people that have no need to scream and shout, right? And so we keep, we keep through osmosis those kind of people around us because we attract who we are. We attract who we are. Yeah. Well, I certainly look forward, Stephen, to uh, continuing observing um, how God uses you on your journey as you continue to amplify your purpose. So thank you for joining us on another episode of Let's Talk About It with Janie Lacey. So in closing, a powerful scripture quoted in the book, Proverbs 25, the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Until next time, this is your host, Dr. Janie Lacey. Thank you for tuning in. Let's Talk About It can be heard live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Please join your host, Dr. Janie Lacey, for another edition of the show next week. 